It's the Monday Morning Show. Today is April 13th, 2018. I'm Ken LaSalle from KenLaSalle.com. One of my goals in the last few months has been to try and make this podcast a little more personal and a little less topical. So, let's do personal. This week, I decided to delay my planned attempt at hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, any of the Pacific Crest Trail, in 2018. I should probably warn you that this episode may have absolutely no bearing on your existence, unless you've hiked or have tried to hike the Pacific Crest Trail and in the process discovered that you cannot sleep in a tent. Because that's what I'll be talking about today. Specifically, backcountry insomnia. I was so happy to find out that had an official, unofficial name. Because backpacking the PCT has been something I've looked forward to, let's say it's, it's been a while. When I set off in 2016 and stopped after 11 miles, I was so out of shape and in such a world of hurt. That night, I got rained on. I was miserable. Oh, and I didn't sleep a wink. I even had a song going through my head, over and over. Yes, that was it. Yes, exactly. For the love of God, please stop. That's right, I had B.B. King singing Joe Cool, ironically, hell, sarcastically, because I was such a fuck-up. And I watched the sun rise, and I thought, I'll never be able to do this. It took a year to start thinking that maybe I could do it, if, if, if I was ready enough. So, I trained. And I trained. I hiked, and I hiked. The following year, I started at Scissors Crossing. Vicky dropped me off, and I told her I'd meet her at Warner Springs by noon the following day. That's about 34 miles overnight, which I hiked. I made it. But I didn't sleep. I cowboy camped. I watched the stars, and they were beautiful stars. But I didn't sleep. I thought the previous year had been a fluke, but, uh, no. And yet I told myself that my inability to sleep was because I pushed myself too hard. About a week later, I found myself at the southern terminus and I set off reaching Lake Marina the following day. I camped at about mile 13, The temperatures that night went below freezing, and the zipper on my sleeping bag broke, which meant I spent the night shivering and, once again, wide awake. And there went last year's attempt. But again, I somehow convinced myself that maybe, maybe, if I was smart, if I was reasonable, if I took my time and didn't push myself and... Okay, I'm going to cut to the chase here. I had a camping trip planned just to make sure I could sleep. I even had Vicky drive me out, which meant no complaining about pushing myself too hard. But as we drove out, all I could think about was my inability to sleep. Here was another year. I could feel this Deep down in my gut, here was another year when I wouldn't sleep. I'd just disappoint everyone, including myself. The pressure to sleep had become so great, 
the dread was so tangible because I knew very well what spending a night wide awake in the middle of nowhere was going to be like. I've done it so many times. I knew how horrible I would feel. So I told Vicky to turn around and go home. I just couldn't face another night without sleep. Okay, now, a little background. I don't sleep on most nights, on a regular basis. I mean, at home, most nights, I stay awake. I do some work. I watch TV. I play some video games. Eventually, around 2 a.m. or so, I start to fall asleep, and I generally average about four hours of sleep a night. Now, knowing that, What do you think led me to believe I could ever sleep outside where there's no TV and no video games, where my only distraction is to beat myself up thinking about how much I suck? Yeah, it's really, really no fun. In fact, it's pretty miserable. And I decided that I had had enough with this pressure to sleep. It was simply too much. I made a video saying I was done. I told all my friends and family. My wife has been wonderful, of course, when she's not being completely brutal. You see, Vicky is is keen to tell me that she can't make my decisions for me, that it's all up to me. But then she drops these hints about what a pussy I am if I don't go, which I think is her way of encouraging me. Guess how much that helps. Now, up until this point, I thought that this, that this was all just me. That it was all in my head. Just another stupid idiosyncrasy that I can honestly live without. Because, believe me, I'm colorful enough without being the only guy who can't sleep in a tent. I've run Google searches about how I can't sleep in a tent, and every single hit is a variation on, Can't sleep? Try camping. Because apparently, for the rest of the human race, camping actually helps put people to sleep. Great, huh? And then I found the term backcountry insomnia. Not a lot of people suffer from it, clearly, but some do. And I can't describe for you my relief at knowing that it's not just my brain that's whack or as whack. And it's usually at this point in the story where the hero will dust himself off, pack up his bags, and head on down to sunnier horizons. Right? Except, I still want to backpack the PCT. And I know I can't do it if I can't sleep. In fact, I wouldn't doubt that it's my fear of not being able to sleep yet again that is keeping me from sleeping. Wouldn't that be typical? But how would I do it? How would sleep even be possible? Now, I wouldn't ask that question unless I'd come up with a possible answer. So here it is. If you suffer from backcountry insomnia and would like to give this a try, please let me know if it works. If this does work for me, and if I do sleep, you can be certain I'll spread the news. So, here's my plan. I know I can't just go camping and try to sleep, because the pressure to sleep 
along with the fear of not being able to sleep, are going to stop me from sleeping. That's pretty clear. I decided that what I need, then, are low-pressure opportunities to sleep. Somehow, I need to sneak up on myself when I'm not looking. Enter naps. That's right, naps. My plan hinges on naps, of all things. As ludicrous as this might sound, just stick with me. My plan is to keep hiking day hikes, keep in shape, keep hiking. But from now on, I'm bringing my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag. And whenever I stop, maybe once per hike, I'm going to lay them out and try and take a nap. My gut tells me that after a while, napping should be no problem. Short naps, like about, maybe maybe I start at 15 minutes, maybe I start at a half hour, but short naps will turn into longer naps, which then should, should translate into sleeping overnight. Will that work? I honestly have no idea. But the alternatives I've been given, people have suggested everything from sleeping pills to whiskey, don't sound particularly healthy or especially helpful in a camping environment, especially alone. And the response to my video saying I'll not be hiking the PCT this year has been so positive, so very supportive. I doubt I deserve it, but I'm not going to complain. That I want my friends and family, I want my fellow hikers and everyone out there to know that I have not given up. That I am formulating a plan. I'm not through I am not beaten. I am not licked. Because sleep is the only thing preventing me from hiking the PCT. I've become a much better hiker over the years, and I've grown as a person as a result of my relationship with the PCT. How could I possibly allow something like sleep, or the lack thereof, to stop me? I certainly hope it doesn't, and I'm going to put forth my strongest effort to see that it doesn't. And I really hope my plan works. I really hope it does. Because, to be honest, that's, that's the only plan I've got. Until next time, be good to yourself, be kind to others, and let's make this world a better place.